Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to be going over the 12.10B tier list for midlane. Uh, so if you remember in my last video, I actually said I'd come out with this video a day after, but then after playing on the patch and after experimenting with a few champs, I decided I wanted to wait a bit longer. It seemed like, well, one, I hadn't seen a lot of the champs on the list, so I didn't really like feel confident in a lot of them. And also I feel like the change was a bit more, it was a bit harder to tell with a lot of the champs. Like I still wasn't sure if like I was just, you know, if I had a good game, was it because of the patch or like was the champ OP, you know, before or whatever. So basically I wanted to collect a bit more data. So first off, uh, if you haven't watched my 12.9 tier list video, I talked a lot more about every champ on this list in detail back then. So this is the 12.9 tier list here. So if you want to know about any champion specifically, um, I'd recommend checking out that video because I go into depth on every champion. Whereas this video, we're going to talk more about the types of champions. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that a lot of the champs that were OP last patch are also OP this patch. So a lot of the champs that were already strong were quite good, like D DPS wise or overextended fights um, and now that that's kind of like incentivized even more you see these champions that already thrived in that sort of situation um, continue to remain on top I think like Vex drop down, dropping out of S tier and Talia coming up honestly I think um, Vex is actually still uh, I'm a bit uncertain on her I think she's quite good still but I think Ari just kind of fits her role better uh, and I think Talia was actually like she was already rising up as an OP pick last pick she has been nerfed by the way on the 12.10b uh, patch but I don't think the nerfs are enough to take her out of S tier I think she's still really really strong assassins on average have fallen about a tier I think assassins were kind of the hardest hit class by this patch there is some of them that I think can adapt by going to a more like um bruiser-esque build or like uh extended fight build so to give you some examples stuff like akali with the rift maker demonic build we have um stuff like echo where they're not you know building for the full one shot they're instead going like again just like for a bit of a longer fight um building items that give like more cdr and more hp you kind of see that a bit more often uh but just like in general like assassins i think are the hardest hit they've always been a class that is very closely tied to their ability to one-shot their opponents and if they can't then they lose a lot of their value um so yeah across the board you kind of see assassins falling down i'd say around a tier on average control mages on the other hand i think are about a tier better on average kind of the opposite of the assassins now um they're a bit stronger it's like much harder for them to get one shot and i also think like uh, against a lot of like the tankier champions that are starting to rise up a lot of these uh, control majors are quite good even the ones that i wasn't too sure about you know champs like syndra where they kind of do have the tools to play extended fights but also they're really good at bursting um, but you saw these champions increase in win rate as well um, so yeah, I think for the most part, control mages have either improved by a bit or quite a lot, depending on the champion. Um, and they're a pretty strong class at the moment, so it's definitely worth like playing at least one of these champions uh, for climbing on this path. Poke mages were one that I wasn't too sure about, so champions like um, Lux, Zareth, and Zoe, I wasn't really too sure where they would end up, and it seems for the most part, um, they haven't really changed too much, I'd say like um zoe maybe is like a little bit weaker than before just because like she was uh quite good at one-shotting people and isn't quite as good at lux and zareth as having those like longer extended fights so i'd say for the most part uh poke mages haven't been significantly affected probably one of the few classes that haven't had like drastic changes in win rates at least in some of their champs um, I do think uh, that overall there are like better picks than poke mages at the moment, but they kind of remain in that same like niche that they had before, um, where they can be good, but they're definitely not overbearing in solo queue. So bruises and DPS melees seem to be a bit better overall. I think there were some that I definitely thought would be better, like the Yon and the Yasuo. I really feel like they benefit like a fair amount from the patch, um, but there were some I was like definitely surprised by. So just looking at the win rates, like Set and Pantheon have gone up quite a lot. And I thought that was quite interesting. I think just like the base stats benefits them a lot and they still have the damage to kind of deal with everyone else being tankier. Um, that said, there were some exceptions to this. There are some champs I thought would be really good, like Aurelia and I'm gonna, um, but for the most part, I'd say like the either Bruiser-esque champs, you know, your um, Set's Pantheons, like Rivens, etc. They seem to have gone a bit better. And as well as like the kind of melee DPS fighters, so we've got stuff like Silas, Yasuo, um, and Yon in that kind of category where they already wanted extended fights and everyone being a bit tanky is not really any problem with them. Um, they have like the extra tanky stats on their own and then they're also like fairly decent at dealing with tanks in turn. So one I was quite surprised by is actually the champions that are kind of like fall into the category of being like healing or shielding. So um, you've got like Enchantress champions, you know, stuff like Karma Lulu, and then you also have champions that were very reliant on healing like Vlad and Aurelia. So these like these champions, I was very interested to see how kind of like the balance would be between the nerfs to their shielding and healing 
and kind of like the the aspect of having like longer extended fights. I was of the opinion that champions like Vlad Norelia and Karma would like all benefit quite a lot. And it seems for the most part their win rates have fallen. That being said, Vlad has gotten a buff. And also I feel like again, there are some kind of um, interesting things happening here. Like you might see Aurelia go like a Sundra build instead of a Bork build. Um, Vlad's got his hotfix. And then like a champion like Karma, despite her maybe being a bit weaker in isolation, I feel like she kind of has better combos after the patch. Like I think um, a lot of the DPS junglers that like this meta quite a lot do pair well with Karma. So we have champions like Kindred or Graves. Um, so yeah, I think while uh, these champions did kind of take a hit, it's not the end of the world and likely they'll be seeing some kind of uh, tune-ups in 12.11, I have a few feeling um so yeah we'll kind of see how that goes but that was really interesting to me because i thought like for sure these champions would go up and win rate um by a lot so yeah i don't think they've moved up moved around a ton but maybe they've moved like down like a, a half a tier average also you might have seen i kind of increase the amount of champs in the s2 counter it's before i just didn't really add as many but i think a lot of these champions whether they've been buffed or nerfed still kind of remain in the same spot for mid lane where they're still a very good counter they might be a little bit better or a little bit worse when not countering but they still remain as strong counters and yeah i've added a few more champs because a lot of you were curious about some of the like lesser played mids um so yeah hopefully that's helpful as well so let's talk about some of the specific champs that kind of had like pretty big changes so azir was one i think azir kind of like shot up in win rate quite a lot he was a champ that before you know pretty niche pick i would say and is just like yeah you know benefits from having like more extended fights from tankier champs coming in the meta um so yeah he's just like one of those champs i think he actually like Kit wise, he actually has a decent kit for solo queue. You know, he's got gank setup, mobility, strong laning phase, and stuff like that. Uh, but just that like mid game trough, like against um, kind of squishier champs, was just like always a problem for Azir. Whereas I think now, like the progression is a bit more natural. He can build stuff like a, a DPS build, like Leandre's Nashes or something, as opposed to just like the flat pen Luden Shadow Flame, like he used to go before. And I think that helps like kind of flatten out the build a bit. And also, he has really good scaling, so I think the game being slower definitely benefits him a lot. Brand is another one that had like a massive increase in win rate. I think that shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone. Uh, just like overall everyone having like more HP and more tankiness doesn't really make a difference to Brand. And also Brand is a champion that kind of like has always struggled with being one shot himself, you know, very short range as well. So I think while Brand is better in the meta, he kind of like, he can't go any higher because a lot of the meta matchups are very, very difficult for him. Um, but in terms of just like pure champion strength, like regardless of like kind of the matchups he faces and stuff like that, I think he's like really quite strong now. Whereas before, I think he was basically a troll pick. Kale, another one that I think like, it's interesting. Kale's already been hotfix nerfed because she was like doing so well. Um, and again, yeah, this is kind of interesting because I feel like Kale always struggled a bit in solo queue because in the early game, she kind of just like give up too much pressure, even if she didn't fall behind like her team would. Um, but I think now like the game's being a bit slower, obviously extended fight is very nice for Kale. And again, paired with like those extended um, fight junglers, you know, stuff like Hecarims, Graves, Kindreds, um, Kale ult works really well with these champs. So overall Kale's been like a big beneficiary of the of the patch. Um, and you know, those nerfs, uh, they're absolutely justified. I think she's she's pretty damn strong. Talia, I feel like I just talk about this again for a sec. So I think Talia was already kind of designed and positioned to be really good on this patch you know all the changes that they made to her kind of rewarded um you know extended fights um she became less of a burst mage and more of a control mage and i think that really set her up for this patch and then again i think last patch she was already becoming quite strong as people kind of figured out what was optimal on her so now it just feels like more like the perfect storm of you know the meta changes in her favor she's already really strong people have worked out the build um and that kind of like pushed her to the top now she did get a, a kind of slew of hotfix nurse but when i looked at them i didn't feel like any of them was super impactful there was one that reduced the stun duration which was a bit annoying but i think ultimately uh the champion is still very very strong is she maybe the best champion in the game like i've got here on the top of s tier honestly i'm not sure i feel like maybe she isn't quite that good but uh ultimately i definitely think she's an s tier champion and uh really worth picking up at the moment she's not as hard as she used to be and she's pretty fun to play as well anivia now in the first couple days anivia had something like a 59 percent win rate before she got nerfed um i think anivia is a pretty strong champ overall i think she does well against a lot of the other meta picks um like i said before she was always an underrated champion and now uh kind of the patch changes have kind of benefited her a lot so the only reason I don't really have Anivia in a higher tier, in S tier here, is I still feel like she's very much like a one-trick champion. She does have some difficult matchups, as well as I'm just not quite sure where she lands after after the hotfix nurse. Wayne, another champ that kind of feels like Talia, like his rework was designed for this patch. Um, and again, his win rate's gone up quite a lot and he seems really, really strong. 
Another kind of problem with Swain is I do feel like against a lot of the other control mages, he has quite difficult matchups, so I'm not sure if we'll ever see him reach the S tier, and I'm not sure if he should be as highly rated as he is, um, but overall I think he is really strong and definitely worth putting some games on. TF and Aurelian Souls, the two roaming champions, I was kind of surprised to see TF go up a lot. I wasn't too sure what would happen to him, because like on one hand, uh, you know, he's not really a champ that needs to do damage, but also it's like you can't gold card squishies and just have them one shot by your team. Um, but it seems like TF has benefited from the extended fights, you know, getting out more cards and stuff like that, and Aurelian Soul as well, um, getting a lot of extra kind of like work out of extended fights, you know, getting more orbs off and stuff like that. So I think overall these two champs, they have gone quite a bit better. Um, TF definitely uh, are kind of a more, what's the word, like more fundamental champ as opposed to Aesol, which is very unique, but they're both very, very strong. So some of the champs that fell a lot, I think the first one is Vex. So... Yeah, I think Vex was like a bit more reliant on one-shotting than some of the other champs. And I think when Vex goes like a more CDR and perhaps like CC focused build, I feel like Ari just kind of fits her role better. So I don't think Vex is really bad, but I feel like she's kind of been replaced. Like she doesn't really have that one-shot role anymore. And then her CC role is just kind of done better by especially these three champs here. Um, the other S tier champs are all pretty much champs that are very similar to kind of Vex's role now. Um, so yeah, I don't think she's weak by any means, but there's just like better options. And that's kind of like why I've dropped her to A tier. Aurelia obviously dropped quite a bit. This one was very surprising to me because I thought Aurelia would be a lot better. But again, it seems like the healing changes have just nerfed her a lot. Um, it could also be that at least in mid lane, a lot of the meta champs are quite good against Aurelia, at least not in lane, but quite good in team fights. So I think this could kind of just like be she's suffering from kind of the meta matchups making her job a bit more difficult as well as maybe still people going to Bork build whereas I feel like now the Sunder build might be better so we'll actually see if it really ends up coming back like kind of soon because I feel like you know if the meta were to change or if if uh you know the item build changes and again like just if yeah like a few minute things can change like Aurelia definitely likes extended fights right so she's kind of like in the right spot to come back she just needs like a couple key changes here and there um and then i think we'll see her shoot back up so i definitely don't think she's bad um, by any means but as like before i think she was quite op whereas now uh she's more in that kind of balanced state which is a bit rough for a champion that is so difficult like her you know typically champs that are very very difficult are rewarded by being like extremely broken once you master them vlad again another champ that i was surprised ended up having the need hotfix buff so the healing nerfs i guess turned out to be quite rough for vlad but i think again the patch is quite good for him you know um champs that are like a bit tankier in general you know longer fights get more cooldowns off um, everyone being a bit tankier I think is absolutely fine with Vlad. There are some situations where maybe now you can't one-shot people that you could before, um, but Vlad doesn't really need to play like that, where there are some other champions that just have to play like that, but they don't have an alternative playstyle. Um, so I could see Vlad like become quite strong. Again, I think some of the meta matchups can be quite difficult for him, but a lot of them are good for him as well. So he's kind of in a weird spot. I think he is strong, just maybe not quite as strong as before. Karma already talked about quite a bit. I think she has really good synergies with a lot of the extended DPS champs has fallen off quite a bit in terms of just like individual strength. Um, that being said, I think like there are a lot of different ways to build Karma. You know, you might see a more AP focused Karma as opposed to like a Moonstone focused Karma. So there's definitely other things available here. I uh, definitely don't think she's weak by any means. And I remember having one really good game on Karma the first day. Um, so I think she is quite strong, just maybe like a little bit more niche than she was before, where you could just pick her in literally every single game and, and kind of have like a good result with her. And the last one I want to talk about is Cassio, because I think all the changes actually benefit Cassio quite a lot. But the problem is the way the meta is going in terms of mid matchups, um, it's not really good for Cassio. So Cassio does very well against tanky champions, um, as you all know. But the problem is that after the patch, a lot of Cassio's kind of natural counters, you know, control mages, stuff like Syndra, Azir, Ori, Victor, you know, all these champions, they've all got quite a bit stronger so i think cassio is still very very strong just like as a champion you know champion strength is very very high it's kind of the matchups at the moment that are kind of like holding her back from just being one of those s tier champions that being said if you play cassio in another lane like bot lane for example i think cassio um, is very very strong or if you can get a matchup where you're not versus one of these like heavy hitting control mages i think she's really really good as well uh, so yeah, definitely a champion that I recommend playing. Just like maybe you need to be a bit more careful about blind picking her than you did before. So everyone, that's going to be it for this video. If you do want to know again about any of these champions individually, check out my 12.9 video. I'll link it in the description. But I think, yeah, in that video, I have like all the champs timestamped. And I don't think the game's changed so much that it's like, you know, my opinions on the champions are out of date. Just in general, I think like, 
just remember that the patch has only been out for a few days. Like we're still kind of figuring out what's strong. It might be that a lot of these champions that are on the weaker side actually have like good builds and stuff like that. And again, like the meta is still shaking itself out. So if like certain champions come around, you know, if it becomes very tanky, you might see control mages rise up even more. Um, and then, yeah, again, we also might see like a bunch of assassin changes come in on the next patch and then have to update this again. So just keep that in mind. This tier list shouldn't be taken as gospel. It's an opinion piece. Um, and like, there's still a lot of stuff kind of in flux and changing in the game. But hopefully that gives you some kind of perspective on what I think of the patch and kind of let me know what you think um, below and go ahead and like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.